So if you haven't guessed it, we're doing a baseball movie right now. It's the Jackie Robinson story here on The Matinee. Hi, I'm Mike Butler. And I'm Mike Field. And this is The Matinee with Forgotten Cinema, brought to you by Best Ever Channels. So today, as I said in the opening, we're doing the Jackie Robinson story. As you can tell, I am a New York Mets fan. Let's go Mets. I think they lost last night. That's neither here nor there. Uh, we're going to get to do here, we're going to do a quick rundown of the movie, um, our thoughts, kind of an abbreviated version of what we do on our podcast, which we'll talk about later. Mike, uh, have you ever seen this movie before? I've never even heard of this movie. I did not know Jackie Robinson did his own biography right right uh it's it's pretty cool uh to see the person who actually lived the life doing the autobiographical movie i guess in a way yeah. although he didn't write it but i knew of the movie uh beforehand and then i watched obviously 42 with chadwick boseman and harrison ford and i know that like that came up again so i right. but i still i never saw it back like i had seen parts of it but i never really saw it when 42 came out um and what's what the first thing that struck me and you saw 42 right before i even go down I the show, 42 with did you, you watch yeah. it with me yeah. Yeah. see that uh, <laughs> just what happens when you get old so what struck me is there are lines almost directly pulled from this movie which makes me think that a lot of these lines are true to life oh yeah that are in 42 and i was just like hey I, that line sounds familiar you know what i mean all right so what's something that struck you about this movie i guess right off the bat uh the thing that struck me the most about this movie was that Jackie Robinson plays himself in the film. I mean, I think that's the most surprising part uh, when we first heard about this when we were going to do this uh, for the show. It, it's a little awkward at first when you see him in his very much younger self. Uh, he he grows up real quick in the film. They, they mostly focus on his more adult life. But uh, you get him in high school, college age him and he's, you know, 1950s Jackie Robinson yeah, age. His path to the majors. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think it's very interesting to see him play these historical moments in his life over again, including some of the not so great moments uh, that deal with racism and, yeah. and bigotry and stuff like that. So I thought that was really interesting and, and very cool for, like I said earlier, for the person themselves to play their own part in a biographical movie. This was one of the first films that, or the yeah, first films that addressed uh, segregation and racism in the Jim Crow era back then. So, cause this is unheard of back then in terms of, you know, something like this in the theater. So it, it obviously was very important. I don't view this, film as the same as I would view more studio-based films. I, I view this as like something like if you're in school, you're going to watch this. Oh, absolutely. It's more informational. It's more educa educational is probably a better word for it. More educational. I would show this to, to people now. You know what I mean? I mean, I know 42 is a more dramatic uh, you know, telling of the story, of oh, yeah, yeah. but that's still that's still a movie. This is This is something that you probably should watch and you should because – it is Jackie Robinson because it is his life and, and everything that he experienced you see on screen. And I would say that we probably saw an abridged version of what he experienced. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? The scene that I think of is when he goes into the diner. It's not really a diner. It's almost like a truck stop diner kind of thing. And he, yeah. And he asks they, they, and the guy and his one of the players is telling him, number one, you go in there. And see if they'll let us eat in there. Number two is you'll go in there, and if they don't let us eat, let us see if they'll um, make sandwiches yeah. for us. And number three, if they if they'll let us wash up. And it's just like, uh, are you kidding me? Like you know, like right. Obviously, two twenty twenty one. Not saying that everything is it, nothing is really you know where it should be, but it, it, back then it's just like dear lord. And then like he, he go in there, and and you can just as he walks into that diner, you can feel just the just the tension. You could just feel the unease as he walks in. Yeah, that, that, that's a tough scene. The scene that struck me the most um, in terms of, you know, tackling racism is the scene on the bench at the ballpark in the, uh, one, of the, one of his first games where we have the right. members of this particular group. Oh, my God. Those guys are ridiculous. And they're talking. And, and You're talking about when they're talking to the dude that's from the Bronx? When they're talking to the guy that is yeah. from New York City, yeah, and he's... Uh, he doesn't like those kind of people either, and they're talking about how they have a special group and stuff. I found that very uncomfortable to watch. Honestly, you can't shy away from that. You need to have that in the story. That's part of the strength of Jackie right, Robinson, right? That he turned the other cheek, like he tells um, Ricky, his uh, the manager of the. Well, Branch Ricky is the owner, the owner of the yeah. Brooklyn Dodgers. He tells Branch Ricky, the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers, 
you know, I have two cheeks when Ricky says you can't fight. Right. Yeah. And you have to have the courage. I don't need. I don't need the courage of somebody who's going to fight. I need the courage of somebody who's not going to fight. Not going to fight. Right, and right. that's that's really hard when you're tackling things like this. I mean, even across the screen, I wanted to punch you guys <laughs> in the face. So it takes a lot of control uh, for Jackie to to yeah. stand his ground to be this model of of what's to come in it, major it, league sports and america in general it's to not give people the excuse that to say that oh this is a failure forget it this isn't right work. you know integrating baseball is ridiculous all that stuff and it's not a external kind of action you know like you know you want your heroes to right. be more external to fight justice to you know to be physical to shout at it together but to just to sit there and you have to take it and understand that you're you're what you're doing is going to resonate beyond your life. Right. To, under, yeah. to actually under, to accept that, to understand that is extremely difficult for uh, many people to do. I don't even know if I could do that. You know what I mean? Oh, I, that's, exactly. that's the thing. That's what makes Jackie Robinson so special. Right. And, and, uh, and this movie really shows it. Yeah. I, like a lot of kids, learned about Jackie Robinson in school. You know, I had a Jackie Robinson book growing up and I didn't know a lot about his earlier life. I didn't know about him getting drafted. Um, and running an athletic league in the army. I didn't know about him playing football uh, in college. I didn't know about him playing basketball in college and baseball in college. He was a triple threat. And uh, that's really impressive and something I didn't know growing up that Jackie Robinson was that good at, you know, all the sports. Essentially. <laughs> so if we have piqued your interest, you can catch the Jackie Robinson story at Best Classics Ever or on the bestclassicsever.com. Or you can also get it at the App Store for Apple, Android, and Amazon Fire. Uh, Mike, who are we? Tell them about Forgotten Cinema. Oh, well, we are Forgotten Cinema. There We're a go. podcast about forgotten films that seem to be forgotten by audiences, whether it be because a more popular movie was released at the same time or the audience simply didn't catch on to it in its initial run. We discuss what we love about the movie, maybe don't love about it, give you some fun facts about its production, and we always recommend you revisit it because you never know when you might find your own forgotten gem. You can find Forgotten Cinema at ForgottenCinemaPodcast.com or all major podcast platforms. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Mike Field. And I'm Mike Butler. And this is The Matinee with Forgotten Cinema, brought to you by Best Ever Channels. Let's go Mets.